The next style of syntax we're going to look at is the freight train style. In case you've forgotten, syntax is the arrangement of words and phrases within a sentence. In other words, it's sentence structure, how a sentence is organized. As you probably know, a freight train has cars that just keep coming and coming and coming. So if something goes like a freight train, it just keeps on coming. So the freight train style of syntax is connecting multiple short independent clauses to make longer sentences of linked ideas. So in other words, each of these clauses could be a little sentence unto itself, but you're linking them to create a long sentence of shorter ideas that just keep coming. Now there's two kinds of the freight train style that we're going to look at. One is multiple coordination. That's using a conjunction, usually and, to link the ideas. But another form is parataxis, and that's using a semicolon. So here's an example of multiple coordination. Jane draws pictures, and she focuses very hard on them. And the pictures slowly improve, and they begin to take on life. Now if we break this down, we've got one, two, three, four ideas. Each of them could be a sentence on its own, because each of them is an independent clause. But we're using and to link them. So you're having, you're creating a longer idea out of short ideas. Here's another example of multiple coordination. I love baseball. I love the crack of the bat and I love the beauty of the field and my favorite team is the Yankees. So, you know, that's kind of the setup sentence. That's not part of the multiple coordination. It starts here. Um, but we've got conjunctions and linking the ideas because I love the crack of the bat could be a sentence on its own, I love the beauty of the field could be a sentence on its own, and my favorite team is the Yankees could be a sentence on its own. So we're taking these smaller ideas and making them into one larger idea. Now here's an example of parataxis. Minecraft is a fun game. I play it with my daughter. She builds bizarre structures. It gets annoying. So you're taking these small ideas and using, instead of and, you're using a semicolon to link them. So some advantages of the freight train style. One, it creates a momentum that drives the sentence forward. Um, with each new idea that comes, uh, it's almost like the reader picks up speed and it, it keeps going and going. And it's like a, a snowball rolling down a hill. It creates this momentum. Uh, second, it does not allow the reader a break. Now that has to be intentional. You have to be doing this with purpose if you're gonna if you're gonna not allow the reader a break. For instance, if you're describing um, something that's harming the environment and you want to make an impression to the reader about the effects of this environmental situation, you could use the freight train style to just have these terrible effects just keep coming and keep coming and keep coming and not give the reader a break, usually using this. Because if you use a semicolon, that does give the reader a break. But if you just use and, then the reader just has to keep going and going and going. There's no period, there's no comma to, to give them a chance to stop and take a breath. But you're trying to do that. You're trying to overwhelm them. So that could be an advantage. And third, it allows the reader to determine the value of each part. Because you're not using transitions between ideas to tell the, the reader the relationship, um, they have to figure it out for themselves. They have to figure out for themselves what they think is most important, least important, that kind of thing. Ernest Hemingway was probably the most influential writer of the 20th century. Uh, his style has, has become part of all literature. It'd be hard to find a writer that wasn't influenced by Ernest Hemingway, even if they're not aware of it. Um, and he used the freight train style brilliantly all the time. Uh, he's famous for it. This is the first paragraph of his great novel, A Farewell to Arms, um, and it'll give you an example of his style. 
It says, in the late summer of that year, we lived in a house in a village that looked across the river and the plain to the mountains. In the bed of the river, there were pebbles and boulders, dry and white in the sun, and the water was clear and swiftly moving and blue in the channels. Troops went by the house and down the road, and the dust they raised powdered the leaves of the trees. The trunks of the trees, too, were dusty, and the leaves fell early that year, and we saw the troops marching along the road and the dust rising, and leaves, stirred by the breeze, falling, and the soldiers marching, and afterward the road bare and white, except for the leaves. Now we could focus in multiple places, but let's start focusing here. Now this is just a linking of two independent clauses. Troops went by the house and down the road, and the dust they raised powdered the leaves of the trees. So you got idea number one and idea number two, and you're linking them with and. Notice he doesn't give you a comma. Um, but then there's this sentence here, this longer sentence. The trunks of the trees, too, were dusty. So there's one. And the leaves fell early that year, too. And three. And we saw troops marching along the road in the dust rising. So he's using, again, and to link these independent clauses and to create this momentum. And what he's doing here is creating a feeling like watching these troops marching down the road. They just keep coming and keep coming and keep coming as they march off to war. And that's kind of the way the sentence is. It just keeps going and going and going. Um, so he's doing it intentionally to create an effect. So some disadvantages. Um, like I said before, using this style does not indicate the logical relationships between the ideas. You're just sort of stacking them um, on top of each other, not giving the reader any indication of what the relationships are or how you should view these ideas in relation to one another. Um, this style also implies all the ideas in the sentence are equally valued. Again, without transitions to sort of determine the relationships, they're all just equal. And this was an advantage, but it can also be a disadvantage. It doesn't give the reader a break. So if you're doing this, if you do this unintentionally and you're not trying to create an effect, then you're probably just going to frustrate the reader because they're not going to see the point of why you're doing it. So that is the multiple quote. Now, what are some disadvantages of the freight train style? One, it does not indicate the logical relationships between ideas. Now, we talked about that. Um, because there are no transitions, each idea is a singular unit linked by and or a semicolon. So there's no relationship indicated in the language. Um, second, it implies all the ideas in the sentence are equally valued. Because each is an independent clause, and there's no transitions to link them, really, other than and, but and just stacks, um, you're not sure the value of each in relation to the other. And thirdly, if you're not doing this for an effect, if you're just doing it unintentionally, then you're not giving the reader a break. And if they can't see a purpose behind what you're doing, then they're probably just going to get frustrated. So that is the freight train style. Mindeman out.